part two of our speculative conversation on the British Tech Network's Mac show with Jeff Gamut about Apple wearables. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Slack. Discussions, questions, and answers, and a place to talk tech with your friends. The Mac Voices Slack is available to all patrons of Mac Voices. Sign up at patreon.com slash Mac Voices and join in. I think an obvious wearable would be uh, like regular glasses where um, um, you're getting heads up display information. So the, the AR experience that that Google promised us with Google Glass but implemented poorly. But then the trick is how do you get the um <clears throat> how do you get the power usage to a point where it's not like Vision Pro where there's a cord hanging off your head going to a battery pack. And so so everybody wants the uh the if you've read Demon by Daniel Suarez, that's what everybody wants is mm-hmm. those kind of glasses. Realistically, though, there are so many issues with that, not the least of which is privacy in a world that seems to just be intent on identifying me every 10 minutes. Um, and I'm reading a book that I will eventually talk about at some point that has has to do with some of this, which is kind of terrifying. But anyway, um, so I, I mean, it would be great if I could put these on or put on a pair of those and I walk into Mac stock and I see somebody there that I haven't seen in, in a year I met last year and it would be great if who they are could pop up so that I could greet them by name because I don't remember their name. So, I mean, that's, that would be fantastic. It'd be even better than if I could have access to additional information about that individual, about how I met them, where I met them, what interaction I've had with them. Mm-hmm. But again, that's science fiction, and we've we found out along the way here that science fiction looks great in science fiction, but when you apply it to the real world, people abuse it. Yeah, uh, Tony Stark's glasses. That yes. I think that's a great modern example that a lot of people would recognize. Yes, and um, I mean the Tony Stark glasses, super cool, super great, and uh, and. There's no way we could fit technology like that into glasses today. And even still, those glasses had a wireless connection via satellite to a a, a massive computer system that was, uh, was handling the actual processing. Magic Man says you're talking minority report. And you're, you're right. I mean... Th- this, this is a little bit different for for the Mac show because we're just rampantly speculating and you know taking it to you know where could it go. But I feel like now, because we've had some experience with some of these devices that are so ubiquitous and with us so much of the time, that we've started to determine that maybe this is not something we want all the time. Maybe we don't want to be tracked all the time by by everyone because you know. <laughs> Again, it's it it has been abused in the past. It would be great. It w- the air tag would have been fantastic, and nobody would have ever challenged it until it was abused. And then people were starting to say, "Is this a good idea?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but it's also a testament to to how good the product is that Apple made in air tags, because we had personal trackers like an AirTag for years and years, for a decade before AirTag came out. And we never saw reports, news stories about how dangerous these are until the AirTag happened. Right. Right. Which may have been, I mean, were things being abused back then and they weren't getting the publicity? Were, was the public and law enforcement not aware of the trackers? The same way that, you know, and with anything Apple, obviously it gets a lot of publicity. Mm-hmm. So that's a double-edged sword. You're right. You know, the, the, air, the air tags, I mean, think about the people we're seeing right now or did see earlier this week um, stuck with, especially with Delta, but with all the airlines. And they don't know where the luggage are. And Well, if I have 
if I have an air tag in my luggage, I've got a pretty good idea of where it is. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I may not be able to get to it because the airline may not let me, but I can probably help them at pinpoint least you know it. where it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I have, I have a better chance of recovering it eventually. All right. I have another wearables question for you, Chuck. We talk about wearables and we talk about devices that we're, we're adding to our body. Wearables can also be clothes. Is there a space where Apple could make smart clothes? I don't know. Would that be like shoes that that more accurately track your your gait and your the distance you're traveling, or um, I don't know, a, a smart shirt that can adapt to conditions around you, so you're you're always comfortable. But then it's also monitoring your body temperature, so. Um, if you're getting sick, you might know earlier, you know, just like you can do with uh, the temperature tracking if you wear an Apple Watch all night. I I mean, look, is it possible? I'm sure it is somewhere because I mean, they could build sensors into anything. Uh, for the footwear, uh, I think a more logical approach would be to have something a la AirTag that you clip to like or we had do you remember when apple partnered with nike and they made the little sensor that went in uh nike shoes that had a special cutout in them and there was an attachment that connected to your ipod and it would track your your running i forgot about that I so it's already it's, it's already <laughs> of course you do if Dave were here, he'd reach over and say, yeah, here it is. <laughs> um, he probably would. Yeah. I've been in his office. I know he can reach all those things. Yep. I've been there too. And you're right. You're right. Well, so that's already been done. So it could be done again. You know, mm-hmm. it just, but it also means that that then I've got to a, make sure it's charged B make sure I've inserted into the sne- the, the, the shoe or sneaker and then C make sure I'm wearing that shoe or sneaker during the time period that I want to track. Mm-hmm. I'm true. not uh, so, or if they build it into the shoe, well, that means I got to charge my shoes every night. So that, and we have <laughs> seen that as a thing too. And it, people it, don't seem to, to be a fan of that. Yeah. I mean, it's almost, it's almost to the point now of how good is good enough because I, my watch, I mean, if you and I go on walk from, I don't know, walk down the Vegas strip. Okay. Your your step count is probably going to be different than mine. It just seems mm-hmm. like there there is no such thing as a standard step count, because if nothing else, we all have different strides, and that's that's why you have to calibrate your Apple Watch, um, if you're going to be using it to track uh, distances that you're going. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Does it really matter if I've gone ten, uh, you know, one point two miles or one point four miles? And it, the answer to that is, it depends. For some people, that those two tenths of a mile matter, and uh, and for other people, it's just like, yeah, I, I had to walk more than a mile to get to where I was going, or I've walked more than a mile today. Good for me. But for some people, it it's like I I need for whatever reason I have set for myself. I need to walk uh, one and a half miles every morning and every evening, and uh, and if I walk one point four miles, I'm a tenth of a mile short, which now means I have to walk one point six miles tonight, so that I have my three full miles every day. But is 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 it really critical that you walk three miles every day, or is two point nine to three point one? Is that range good enough? That's a that's a totally valid question, and I think it probably depends on the purpose or the person and their use case. I think the, for most people, if you want to walk three miles a day and uh, and you track yourself to two point nine or three point two or whatever yeah close enough i hit i i hit my mark and the reason i I bring that up is because that's what we've got with the apple watch Mm -hmm. you know we've we've got something and 
and the phone to some degree too, that, you know, we've got something on our body already that is giving us good information. It might not be great information. You, you know, you really would have to get them a dedicated pedometer and say, okay, how is this matching up to something that is built specifically for this? Mm-hmm. But that's, but the fact that now I can, I can have all that on my, on my wrist, along with all the other things that the Apple watch does, I don't have to have a separate device. I don't, and I don't have to charge my shoes or insert the little thing in my shoe to, to get that. It'll be in future. I have to charge. I can't, I can't go walking today. I need to charge my shoes. Yeah. I, I like it. Mag- hey, Magic Man, though, brought up an interesting thing. A jacket type would certainly cure the power situation. Um, yes, I, I agree. And, uh, and so what would the jacket be doing? And my, my first thought is it would be doing something like, um, um, uh, we, we both have seen people who are wearing vests that have a battery pack in them and they can push a button and the, and then the vest heats up. Yep. So, um, yeah, so, something that a, a jacket you wear that can help you maintain a constant body temperature. Which sounds more like a medical device or, well, scratch that, you know, because I guess it could be a comfort device if you live in a climate that uh, needs you to be a little warm. I'm sure there's also some technology out there uh, that could, you know, give you a little refrigeration or a little cooling. Mm -hmm. So, Well, in Colorado, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, doesn't matter what the temperature is, when you leave your house, you should always take a jacket. You may not need it, but you should always take it because there's a good chance you'll need it for something. And it, it could be to keep you warm. It could be to block the sun. Uh, it could be because it starts raining and your jacket can help keep you dry. So there are some places where having a jacket with you all the time totally makes sense. And there, there are other places where it wouldn't. So that would be a sometimes wearable. Is there a market for you sometimes wearable like that? Depends on, like so many things, depends on the price, depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, it's interesting you say that in Colorado. In Pennsylvania, a lot of times I'll keep a a light jacket or a sweater with me because you go into a restaurant and they have the air conditioning turned up so cold that you you know to be comfortable you need to pull on a little something extra as opposed to what you're wearing outside mm-hmm. which is you know th- the less the better so mm-hmm. hey what's that company that makes the the jackets and vests scotty scotty vest yes yeah uh magic man in the in the chat room said uh the jacket could have loads of sensors charging points rings and glasses Basically, Magic Man, what you're describing is is a Scotty vest or Scotty jacket, and the, and those have all these pockets built in so that you can hold all your stuff. They have battery packs in them, at least some of them do, so you can charge all your stuff on the go. And um, um, depending on your use case, uh, a Scotty vest or Scotty jacket could be a really useful thing. And and every conference we go to. There's at least one person that probably more that has their jacket or vest with with all the pockets and charger points built in. And ironically, Jeff, my my Scotty vest is sitting right over there because it's in the my pile of stuff that I definitely want to I'm I'm taking with me for my trip because I always wear I always wear the Scotty vest on the plane. Because Mm -hmm. that way when I go through security, I take everything out of my Scotty vest. Or excuse me, out of my pockets and put it in the Scotty vest, and then I can take just the vest off, throw it on the on the uh, the uh, yeah the luggage you know scanner, the pick scanner, it back up, yeah. pull it back on. Everything is right where I left it. I know exactly where it is, and it also allows me to carry a lot more stuff on the plane than I could in my just in my my pants pockets. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, if if you don't have a Scotty vest and you're traveling a lot. You need a Scotty vest. Um, yeah, I have one of their their coats that it it's it's like a parka. It's it's insulated, but it 
I mean, I'm not going to wear it out in the dead of winter because I'll freeze to death in it. But uh, yeah, it has tons of pockets and uh, you can pack everything in it. They're, they're kind of crazy how much you can put in those. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, hey, I, I want to circle back to one thing that I mm-hmm. unintentionally said earlier. And I've, I've thought about it and I've never really, we've never had a chance, the opportunity to discuss it. Um, but that citizen uh, watch that I mentioned, you know, that would, would charge itself adequately just by, you know, the motion. Mm-hmm. I seriously doubt that's something that could drive, you know, even our low, the low power displays we have now. But would that have a potential place for any of these wearables, that technology? And I, again, I'm way outside my boundaries here because I don't know how much it generates or anything like that. But I know I never, my, my, at that point, my watch never, never ran out of juice. I never found that, oh, my watch is dead. So charging is a thing. Okay. So is that something that could be leveraged? Maybe uh, the the thing with with the kinetic charging devices that I've seen is that it either involves a hand crank or you need to have lots of motion. So like uh, like a device that that is always getting shaken. Um, the I've seen some of these portable chargers that that kinetically recharge themselves that you hang on a backpack and so you go hiking and this thing is like swinging on your backpack and that, that charges the battery so that you have some power to recharge whatever, when you get to wherever you're going. And I have found all of these to be, uh, except for the hand crank ones to be, uh, horribly inefficient. Like you, you'd be better off charging up a bunch of, of portable batteries and carrying the extra weight in your bag as opposed to using a kinetic charger. Um, but it is a technology that uh, that is being sold today. And like any technology, it can improve over time. <clears throat> so at some point, maybe having some sort of kinetic charger built into your Apple watch, or your phone to help supplement the battery charge could be a thing. Again, it's just, I mean, all these technologies are out there and you're right, Jeff, I, you know, it's probably not the most efficient thing, but it's an option. And you know, mm-hmm. somebody, you know, somebody inside Apple has already gone through this and eliminated it or has it on the shelf for a product that it might apply to later. Mm-hmm. So sure. we'll just we'll have to see, we'll have to yep. see. But it's it's yep. fun to speculate on this stuff because there's we talk about what we want, and I feel like at least for me, I've I've tempered what I want a lot more with um with the reality of what I've got, and and mm-hmm. I'm specific I'm specifically thinking privacy and tracking and those kind of things that we never knew that we didn't want to be tracked because we were never really tracked before. Or at least not that we knew about in quite the same way. So mm-hmm. now that now that's really high on our list. What other things might we find that gee, it sounds like a great idea, right up to the point that it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally get it. But hey, you know what is a great idea? Working yeah, so hosts. Yeah. That's I've, right. I'm doing the Ben the, the Ben Rathic thing, yes. You did great. <laughs> well done, Chuck. I'm so proud of you. Um, all right. So why would I, would I be bringing up TSO hosts? Well, it's because they are very generously giving us the resources we need to bring shows to you every single week. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and what they do is they, they offer web hosting and they help people by domain names and they're taking that technology and saying, here you go. Here's the bandwidth that you need to live stream shows every week. Here's the hosting space you need so that there's a place for the BTN website to live. Here's the server space you need to store files so people can watch or listen to recordings anytime they want. And uh, yeah, so they're taking what they what they do and and giving that to us so we can do what we do without their help. 
we would not be able to do what we do here. And that, and that's not hyperbole at all. That's, that's just how it is because it takes a lot of resources to make all of this happen. And, uh, and because of TSO hosts, we can do that. So thank you TSO hosts for being here and supporting us. Now I'm saying it out loud right now. So TSO hosts can hear me, but since all of you aren't on the show right now, that means they can't hear you. So what you can do so that they do hear you is go on social media. Thank TSO hosts for being here and supporting us. It's, it only takes a minute. It's super easy to do. And it's a great way to let TSO hosts know that we all appreciate their generosity and, uh, and, and the help that they give us here at, at the British tech network. So thank you again to TSO hosts. And, uh, and as long as we're talking about TSO hosts, if you have found a domain name that uh, that you just have to get, you know, like like Chuck's awesome walking shoes, and uh, Ch- Chuck's fancy wearables, I'm I'm working on this. I'm going to come up with something. <laughs> and, I'm terrified. And I'm terrified, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. I I better stop with coming up with the names because I'm about to go way off in left field with that. And, uh, yeah, anyhow, so you found that perfect domain name that, uh, that you need to buy. Why not get it from TSO hosts? Because they're going to make it easy to do and they offer really good pricing. So, uh, there you go. Just it's, it's, it's super easy. Just go use TSO hosts to buy those domain names. Um, get whatever you need, but make sure that you add the discount code BTN20 at checkout because you're part of the BTN family, they're giving you a 20% discount on their already great prices. So please take advantage of their generosity. And, uh, and it's another way to let TSO hosts know that, that you appreciate that they're here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you again, TSO hosts for being here and supporting the British tech network. All right. Now in the past, this is the part of the show where if I had to do it, I had to just flounder through the thing. And it was absolutely ridiculous. Years and years of doing the whole thing about talking about the live chat, and I could never nail it. And then Patrice went and totally um, updated our streaming and chat system. and uh, And now I totally get it. And I can talk about it intelligently. And now that I say that, watch, I'll completely screw it up this week. All right. So when when Patrice went through all the work to, to get us our new modern streaming system, and thank you for that, Patrice, you rock. It took our live chat and bundled it into the same interface. So when you go to live.britishtechnetwork.com to watch live, you get a column down the, the side of your browser window that's the live chat. And everyone can join in and participate. Um, if you want to change your name so that it's not uh, um, uh, like one of the names that popped up was Reverend Zelda. It just makes up names. and that, But if you click on the purple button at the top right of your screen or your browser window, you can rename your your on-screen names so that it's more appropriate. Like in my case, I changed mine to say Jeff. And uh, and that's where you go to see the links for things that we talk about and uh, and cool things when we do cool things. And, uh, and, and it's all there. It's where you get to participate with us. Like Magic Man, you, you have been so active today. And thank you for that. So you can see all the stuff Magic Man has been saying as well. And uh, it, it's all right there. Now, let's say, though, that you don't have the uh, the opportunity to watch or listen live. Well, we have all that hosting from TSO Host so that those show files live somewhere so you can watch or listen. You can still get to that to the chat from that day so you can see those links and everything we discussed. So for that, you go to britishtechnetwork.com slash chat. And Patrice has this really slick calendar there. Click on the day for the show. So today would be July 26th, 2024. Click on that, and then you'll get to see the chat, and you can find all those links and, and see everything that everyone is saying. And uh, and there you go. Simple as that. 
So that's that's the whole live chat thing. And Patrice, thanks again for putting in all the the hard work to get us modernized with the stream in the chat. That that was super cool. All right. So with that out of the way, I'm feeling Chuck like it's summer. And we might as well just blow off talking about cool things because uh, because we should go hang out at the pool and wear our our smart swimsuits that uh, that tell us when it when it's been thirty minutes since we ate so we can get back in the water and not drown. My grandma used to tell me that. Oh no no, you ate. You have to wait thirty minutes before you get in the water or you'll drown. That's the kind of stuff that puts you in therapy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. But Jeff, I think the audience is would be deeply disturbed by the idea of either one of us in bathing suits. You would think that, but have you seen the stuff that's on the internet? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are people that would pay to see both of us in swimsuits. I'll take bids. On the beach. I'll take bids. Oh, sure. I I am not above selling my body. Yes, I'm I'm easy, but I'm not cheap. Quality product. Quality, quality product. <laughs> quality product. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Dave is saying party on the beach in Speedos. Dave, you wear a Speedo. I will wear one too. Just, I'm, it just seems fair. I don't like where this is going. Um, <laughs> Too late, Chuck. You're committed. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, we shall see. We shall see. You're never going to believe where I'm putting the Apple logo. <laughs> On that note, Jeff, that where, note, where can I'm going to take the hosting over? Where can folks <laughs> find you, Jeff? <laughs> they they can they can find me all alone because why would anyone want to spend time with no. me when I talk like this? Um, you can find me on social media. I'm Jay Gamut. And, uh, uh, that's on basically everything, but I'm active right now on Mastodon and Instagram and uh, some on threads. Then for shows, you let me join in on Mac voices live on Tuesdays. So thank you for that. And Dave Ginsburg, who popped in the chat, uh, Dave lets me join in on in touch with iOS on Thursday. So Dave, thank you for that. Here on the British Tech Network, Thursdays for the big show, Fridays for the Mac show. Then uh, Brian Chaffin and I do Context Machine. And Patrice Brendamore and I do Retro Rewatch, where we watch shows that I should have seen, but didn't. But she has. So we talk about them from the perspective of Patrice, who's seen them many times, and me, the person who's seen them for the very first time. And right now we're doing Stargate SG-1. And I think that's all the shows. I'm still feeling kind of crappy. So if I miss something, sorry for, for whatever I missed. And uh, and Chuck, where can people find you? Uh, MacVoices.com. That's where you're going to see everything that I'm doing. Um, working on a few other new projects and a few updates, um, but it is summer. And so things have slowed down a little bit and there are other competing priorities because it's summer. Um, sure. you can, and you can also, well, as Jeff said, Tuesday nights, uh, with, uh, with Mac voices live, um, on YouTube at youtube.com slash Mac voices TV and on pretty much all the socials. You can find me as at Chuck Joyner. Awesome. All right. Well, Chuck, thank you so much for being so wonderfully patient with me today, considering I'm I'm still not fully recovered. Uh, you, you, you are a saint or a fool. The line between the two is thin. I totally get it. Well, especially in my case. Um, but listen, I, I hope you feel better. I'm, I'm glad you're at least upright enough to do the show um, and just keep keep taking care of yourself. We want you back to full power. That that's the plan. And it's funny. I said, yeah, we'll end up doing a short show today and we're coming up on an hour right yeah. now. Yeah. So there you go. But I may go take a nap when we're done. Um, so with that, Chuck, thank you for being here with me. You are awesome. And, um, and everyone that's watching and listening live, participating in the chat. Thank you for being here. All of you are awesome too.
you you rock. Everyone that watches or listens to the shows later, thank you for being part of the BTN family. I'm I'm so glad we all get to be part of this together. And uh, yeah, it's like family. And speaking of family, Ewan, thank you for being you. Muller, thank you for making sure we have people for shows, even if we are the people. Um, and uh, Tia Sohos, thank you for being here and and uh, supporting us. Everyone, please go give them some online love. And uh, with that, I think it's okay now to say, hey, everyone, tune in next Thursday for the big show. And join us again next Friday for the Mac show. We are in somewhere of fun. And uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what rando topics we hit next week. And with that, everyone have an awesome weekend. And we will see you again next week. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page. And get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.